Upgrading the API version for a third-party dependency can come with new features, bug fixes, or even breaking changes. Before applying these updates to production, it's important that you evaluate how your application reacts to these changes in an isolated environment. In this video, I'll show you how you could use the new Sandboxes feature inside of the Stripe dashboard to create isolated environments that you could use to try out new versions of the Stripe API. Over in the dashboard, if I click on the Developers menu and open up the Overview page for Stripe Workbench, you'll see a section that shows you both the latest version of the Stripe API as well as the version that your account is actually using. So as you can see here, this account is using a version of 2022.11.15, which is almost two years older than the actual current version. If I click on this Upgrade button, we actually get provided a link that will show us some of the major changes that have happened since that 2022 version. So as we scroll up, we can see that there's definitely a lot of changes that have happened here. Now, before we apply all of these changes to our application, it will be a good idea for us to try these out in an isolated environment before we push them to production. If we head back over to the dashboard, I'm going to click on the Accounts menu over here, and I'm going to select Sandboxes. And what I'll do is create a new Stripe Sandbox just to try out these new API changes. And now to make sure that the Sandbox has the same settings as the production account, I'm going to make sure that Copy Settings option is toggled. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit Create Sandbox. And in less than a few seconds, we have a new environment that we can start using. Now I'll open up Workbench inside of the Sandbox. In that same API section, I'm going to select that Upgrade button. And now I'm going to upgrade to the latest version of the API. So I'll hit Upgrade, and I'll let it do its thing. Now this Sandbox is using the latest version of the Stripe API, but that hasn't affected anything that's happening in our production account. And if I hit Manage API Keys, you'll notice that this Sandbox has its own set of keys. So using these will only allow you to interact with things that are inside of the Sandbox. Now I'm going to copy the keys into the application and see how it behaves. The application that we're looking at here inside of the IDE is a simple webhook endpoint. And all it's doing is listening for events coming in from Stripe and it's going to do some kind of work with it. But remember, this application was set up to use an older version of the Stripe API. So we want to use the API keys from the sandbox to try it out first. Now, one of the things I need to get is the webhook secret. So I'm going to open up my terminal and I'm going to do a Stripe login I. Now, this is going to allow me to authenticate the CLI with the sandbox, and all I have to do is give it that API key. Now that that's set up, I want to start forwarding events over to my local application. Now, I'm going to do a Stripe listen forward, and I'm going to forward any events that happen in the Stripe account over to this application. With that running, I'm going to take note of that webhook signing secret and make sure I add it to my configuration for my application. Now, let's go ahead and debug this. Notice I've set a breakpoint here on line 21, just so I can take note of any exceptions that get fired within the application. I'm going to head back over to the terminal. I'm going to open up a new terminal window. And this time, I'm just going to trigger a new Stripe event with the Stripe CLI using Stripe trigger checkout session completed. That fires, and now it looks like we got an exception. If I mouse over this variable, it says Stripe exception received with API version 2024.620 but Stripe.net expects version 2022.11.15. So it looks like our webhook handler is detecting an API mismatch, which would have been extremely problematic in production. I'm going to stop debugging this application. I'm going to go ahead and update my Stripe.net packages to the latest version, which is, at the time, it's 45.11.0. Upgrade that version. I am going to rebuild my solution. Great, everything looks good. And let's go ahead and start another debugging session. All right, application's running. Everything looks good here. Let's head back to the terminal. I'm going to issue that same command again. So Stripe trigger checkout session completed. And it looks like everything's running. Trigger was successful. I then hit the breakpoint inside of my debugging session. So it looks like we were able to fix that API mismatch issue before it became problems for us later in production. Now, after you've thoroughly tested your application to make sure it works with all of the latest features, you can head back to the sandbox. Sandboxes are considered to be ephemeral environments, so you could dispose of it if you wanted to, or you can keep it around to try out the next set of API changes that happen in the future. And now, since we're back in the main account, if I open up Workbench, you'll see that the API version here hasn't changed. 
So everything we did in the sandbox had no effect on our production account at all. Isolated test environments provide developers with a safe space to evaluate their code before pushing it to production. Dev tools like Stripe Sandbox are a great option if you're building out a new Stripe integration or wanting to try out a new version of the Stripe API. Now, if you want to learn more about Stripe Sandboxes, then I definitely recommend that you take a look at our documentation and also make sure you check out some of the other videos that we have here on the Stripe Developers YouTube channel.